So we've looked at how to create a user form, how to capture the actions on your user form and carry out some VBA code. We've looked at a variety of controls that you can add on there and how they differ and how you can use them to collect data off your user and interact with your user. The next stage of the user form is aesthetic, is to make it look neater and work a little bit better. If we use the form template underscore complete file, you'll find in the Visual Basic that there is a user form. But when you run that user form, it's very higgledy piggledy. Things aren't aligned, and it looks like someone created it in a hurry. If you want your application to be taken seriously, then your user forms need to be correctly aligned with the tab order as people would expect. So if someone was using that keyboard to move through this form, they would expect to be able to tab through the objects in the order that they appear, not in what appears to be some haphazard manner. Now the default tab order is actually the order that you place objects onto the form. Now unless you plan things correctly up front and don't make any changes, then that tab order is not likely to be correct because we will add things and change things as we go and develop and decide. So you need to be able to change that tab order retrospectively, which we can do, and tidying up we can do, just to make the form look much more professional. Changing the tab order is probably quite easy. Make sure that it's the form that's selected, not one of the single controls. It's the form that has to be selected. And we go to View and Tab Order. This is the current tab order. So the first stage is it goes to the OK button. Well, that should be near the end. And Cancel should be near the end. If we move to one side, we can see what order we'd like to tab in. We'd actually like to tab from the name and then the address. So bring up the label name to the top and then TXT name. The label address next and then the text box for the address. Then do you think people would want to tab into here and then across to there? I think so. So the date of birth is made up of TXT day. So that moves up to be just after the address. In fact, the label address should be for the TXT address. The label is the label. The TXT is the box that people type in. So then comes the day. Then comes the month, which is a combo box, a combo month that moves up to there. Then the year, which is actually a label with a spin next to it. That's what we've got here, a little spin control to change the year that people were born. Then we move the gender up. And then the OK and the cancel box. So according to this, we have a label 4, which is loose on the form. Our label 4 is the date of birth heading here. Now I'm leaving that at the bottom because by default, the labels are actually not part of the tab. Because although we've set this order up, if we then click OK, that order then takes place. What you then need to make sure is that each object actually has tab stop in it. And you can see it true there. But the labels default to false. So every other control effectively that is data is affected by the tab control. But the labels, unless you want them to stop there, if you do, then you need to change this default tab stop of false to true. So our form at the moment. If we enter, you can see the cursor's already in the first field. We tab, we tab to the first date, then the month, then into the year spinner, that as you click, goes up and down the years that we've set as a min and a max. Then tab brings us through to the gender. And we go through each three of those, and then we come to the OK button, and then we come to the cancel button. So you can see the tab stop now works. So that's view, tab order to control and change the tab order as it works. Remembering that labels by default do not generate a tab stop. That's the first part of our aesthetics, making sure that people using the keyboard tabbing through things go in the right order that they would expect. Second is to make sure objects are aligned. The name and the address, they should be A, the same width, so they look neater and both left aligned. Now you do get on the grid little dots to help you or you can physically use the controls within your VBA editor. If you select two items by shift clicking, as I've done there, we can go to format and A, make them the same size so that we can say that they are the same width. And we go back to format and align and make their lefts align. So their left hand sides then get aligned and they're the same width. Now you can actually, while they're multiple selected, manually resize as well and they'll both stay the same size. 
Now the labels aren't quite in line, so let's select both of those. So that's single click and then shift click. Format align lefts. Perhaps ought to make this label go there as well. So keep those selected and select date of birth as well using control click. So that's format align lefts. And notice they all went to the left of date of birth. So if I undo and select them in a different order, so it's date of birth, control click, control click. Now the most recent one has white handles around it, the other two have black around it. I then go to format align lefts and they all become left aligned to the one with the white handles around it. So the order you multiple selecting is important. Now the width of the labels doesn't matter as long as you can read the label because you don't see a border for your labels. The date, the month, the year and the spin ought to be on the same horizontal line. So I've multiple selected all of those. So again, that's control click all the way along, format align tops and all of their tops are aligned together. Now, maybe I'd like that to go to the left, the same as there. So let's go both of those. Let's click, control click, format align lefts. That keeps the horizontal the same, it's just moved the left hand side. These three options in here should all be at the same place. So again, it's control click all the way down, format align lefts. So they all get lined up. And maybe I'd want to use that whole control and move it over. So the tools are there multiple select, format, and we have a line. We have make same size. We even have horizontal spacing and vertical spacing. Notice they're all grayed out because I don't have more than one item selected. So if I wanted these to be all nicely spaced out, I could select all of them by dragging an invisible marquee around them. Go to format, vertical spacing, make equal. And everything gets messed about, which can happen, which is grateful for the undo. It's because that one slightly overlaps that one. The safest thing here is to take those two, format, vertical spacing, and then just step them apart slightly. And then we can align the label to the top of the control. And that's not aligned to the top either. Format, align tops. So multiple select and we can drag them down slightly. So a little bit of playing around just to get things aligned up and people will look at the form in a better way. They'll look at your whole application in a better way. Sorting out the tab control, people will like that as well. It just makes the form look more professional. I mean, if you were to look at an Excel dialog box, everything is aligned perfectly here. These boxes are all aligned. The labels are all left aligned to the boxes. The labels align there, there perfectly in line with those. So they come in the same line. These two are the same height across the preview and the effects, etc. These checkboxes are all perfectly aligned underneath each other. How untidy would it look if that wasn't aligned? So you need to do the same with your user forms. And it's all achievable just by multiple selecting using the format menu to align things, make them the same size or space them out the same on your form.